Hello again everyone and welcome back aboard Felicity, November 8033 Foxtrot, a Cessna flight training device that I built at home. On the ground here at Tallahassee and we're going to jump right over to the Discord so we can catch the briefing with the Virtual USA Flying Club. You'd like, um, but that is not technically part of the briefing. Uh, the idea is to sort of have a, a, a solid line of, of planes, but I'm certainly not going to stop you if you want to go have some fun at some of the other fields, so um, enjoy. Are you doing a VFR or IFR about uh, it's, it's your choice. The weather looks like it is VFR, um, so you should be okay that way. Uh, I, club, The club tends to prefer, we prefer uh, flying VFR when possible, uh, so I would say if at all possible, stick with VFR. But if you're more comfortable with IFR, you can certainly do that too. Be right back with you. No, uh, no requirements for flight following or anything like that, right? Nope, not unless you want it. Um, I'm not sure how busy Center is with the event with the FNO tonight. So, if it sounds like they're getting kind of swamped, it might be better to just leave them alone, and we'll just get our uh, our taxi takeoff clearances here at Tallahassee and kind of try to stay out of their hair as much as possible until we get down to uh, Sarasota. Because you're gonna have to request uh, request entry into the, or you're gonna have to make contact with them to enter the class Charlie down there and uh, land. But uh, other than that. If you don't want flight following, you, you shouldn't need to talk to them as long as you're aware of the airspace. Cool, that's what I was planning. I figured they'll pr probably be pretty busy and might not even want to support flight following. You think it's a bad idea to fly the vision jet? No, I think the vision jet's fine. Although I think, I believe most of us are taking something a little bit slower, like I'm I'm taking an SR-20, which has a, a cruise of about 130 knots or so. Baron here. I could do the SR-20 too. Hey, Britt. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late coming in. Uh, did I miss anything, uh, Britt? Um... Not much. You're, I think you're pretty familiar with the procedures and everything, so um, Jacksonville Center is online, so we'll have to request taxi and, and you know VFR clearance from them, and uh, just be aware of the Tampa Class Bravo and Sarasota, where we're headed, is a Class Charlie, so uh, make the appropriate calls and, and you know request your permission to land there. Okay, there's no particular order then in the uh, in the line proceeding cell. No, I would say kind of you know just try to be aware of of the aircraft making calls around you and, and try to slot in so we're not we're not bunching up too much on them because uh, if we you know we're if we're out here making a big conga line and making everything difficult for center he's gonna be he's probably gonna be pretty upset with us so um, just try to be aware of that if you need to you know make any sort of diversion to free up some space, you know, make some 360s, S-turns, etc. Uh, just be aware and be ready to do that. I have three Jacksonville centers. Is there a, a, a one preferred? I don't know. Uh, based uh, on the, the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna, uh, based on the the splits map for Jacksonville that they posted to the TMU Discord. Uh, we should be talking. Oh, you kind of cut out there at the end. Sorry. Uh, uh, based on the map that Jacksonville published, it should be one three three point three two for center uh, for the, the low sector tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. <sighs> Okay. Jacksonville 15 center, 35 center, and 50 center. Alright, so we are joining the Virtual USA Flying Club for one of their events. Um, sort of a uh, follow the leader down the Florida coast. 
Congo style, so to speak. And we're going to depart here out of Tallahassee and fly along the uh, west coast of Florida down to Sarasota. I don't think we can even hear half the people Jacksonville Center is talking to. Probably not, and probably even makes it worse that we're on the ground and they're far away. WestJet1450, Caleb, hello buddy, how are you? Welcome. So really hoping to have you here yesterday. I flew into Canada. I needed a, uh, a someone to kind of school me on some Canadian phraseology there, but but they were very hospitable. So I flew to Victoria yesterday. Alright, so we're gonna get started up here. So once once uh. Once my four flight finishes packing the flight plan, um, I will go ahead and fly away via four flight plan on the VATSIM network. It is a bit warm today, um, so I did bring an auxiliary fan. I was thinking 3500 myself. An auxiliary fan with me. To kind of help move some air around the cabin. I was going to go to 5500, but I may not make it that high. Alright, let's get started up. That's alright, there will always be more time than we flying into Canada. Six point five. Melvin Leroy, hello, buddy. Welcome. Getting ready to depart here and out of uh, we're at Tallahassee. Gonna head down to Sarasota and Melbourne. Um, hopefully everything is okay with your family. I was praying for you when I when I heard you had a family emergency. So I hope everything worked out with that. All right. Let's grab my checklist. There's something that I want to do real quick. And we'll check the fuel. Alright, uh, we do have four and a half hours of fuel on board. Our payload weight is right where it needs to be. Okay. Great. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to uh, keep you distracted from some of the uh, uh, tyrannies of life, um, which as of late, uh, especially down in Texas, uh, my, my heart's breaking over that still. Okay. Checklist. Passenger brief, Tallahassee to Sarasota with the Virtual USA Flying Club. Let's start. Let's check the seat track. Let's get scooted up here. Okay, make sure I can reach the pedals. The flight controls. All right. Avionics are off. Our autopilot is off. Cow flaps are open. Circuit breakers are all in. Throttles quarter. 
clear prop, it's clear on the left, it's clear on the right, clear on the front. Alright, and where are we at? Throttle prop is high, mixture is lean, brakes are on. Oh. Mm -hmm. There we go. Masters on. Beacon. Okay. Clear. It's clear on the left and clear on the right. Trying to uh, file my flight plan online we don't through, have uh, through the X Pilot link, and uh, Why am when I, I hit not file, the simulator it's audio. just uh, spinning around there. It's not uh, not submitting my flight plan. It took me three tries for some reason uh, a All little right. while ago. Two here. Power back. Okay. Well, at least I know it's not me. All right. Bear with me just a second. I recently updated my NVIDIA graphics driver and unfortunately it somehow changed my default Windows audio device so I need to unfortunately quit explain in order to make that change so that's what we are going to do and we will have to change the default audio device and everything else I, I didn't you know think twice of it because everything else is assigned you know you assign the audio device within the within the specific program X plane uh, it just uses the default Windows audio device okay so there we go we got that switched back over and let us restart Scenery wise for today's event, I am using Orbix True Earth Florida. Um, there's a uh, Tampa VFR uh, Skyline uh, scenery package that I found on the .org that we'll be using. Um, and yeah, default explain airport. Alright, so we are going to double check our fuel. We're still good there. Had my eight-year-old flying the other day. Can't tell you how many aircraft systems had to repair. Okay, we'll go over here. And we're on today's date. A couple hours back. So once we get booted back in here to Tallahassee, I will reconnect back to the VATSIM network and we will, uh, hopefully you will hear and I will hear, um, the, uh, the sim, you know, the important stuff, the simulator audio. Orbix sceneries do take a while to load initially. I have found that out. Orbix compared to standard orthophotos takes considerably longer it seems. Alright, so this is my default view as I normally would start X-Plane. In order to enhance my immersion I use a warping software. So you know when I activate the, uh, the warping, let's reconnect here. When I activate the window warping, 
And that's when it takes all of the flat panels and turns it into a 360 degree sphere. Um, which is why everything, um, there's no uh, fisheye and or distortion as things move from display to display. Alright, so we are back to square one. Let me go ahead and get started up, get the oil warming up, and I will file my VFR flight plan. So, we are back here at our start checklist. See and track, we are there. Avionics are off, autopilot is off. Complaps are still open, circuit breakers are all still in. Throttle is quarter. Uh, prop is high, mixture is lean. And brakes are on. Clear prop, looks clear in the left, looks clear in the right, clear in front. There we go, master on. Beacon. Yeah, I can hear it now. Beacon switch, beacon. Clear. Max to start. Full rich. Okay. We have engine rotation. Oil pressure is in the green. I'm going to go ahead and turn my landing line on for safety. Now it's a good time to fly our VFR flight plan while we are waiting. Calling center for taxi and pickup. Call sign we November eight zero three three. Got us over at one three five point nine or two. We are type VFR today. Type one eighty two. I can type. Well, thanks for coming in today, everybody. Hey, Wait, category is. light type G. Welcome, Mike. Uh, we are taking slash G because we have GPS on board and transponder. Uh, don't worry so about instead that. Of, like instead of opening up. Child at the reunion. Departing Tallahassee. Arriving Sierra Romeo Quebec. Instead of opening correct? up Tower Sierra or Romeo Quebec, Tallahassee, they that is up correct. another center sector. No alternate airport altitude. Uh, what is say 3,500. Sounds like a decent number. Whatever works. Airspeed. We'll stick with 110 approximately, which may we may modify that once we get in the air. You know, depending on the other aircraft around us. And total flight time figure. We'll just say an hour and 45 minutes, give or take. Fuel endurance. As I said earlier, we do have four and a half hours on board. Route details. We're just going to be VFR. And we marked, we are that same weather enabled. This might have been answered already, but does anybody know which frequency we're supposed to contact for Jacksonville? Tommy, I believe it's Jacksonville 15. 135.92. Somebody put that out on frequency. <laughs> Thanks. That's him with an A-bolt, and we're just going to type Virtual USA Flying Club in our remarks as well. And I will always do that when I'm flying with a group, because that is actually how I found the Virtual USA Flying Club. I was looking for busy places to fly, and I got on that scope, and lo and behold, there was this line of planes following the uh, Columbia River. And they all had virtual USA flying club in their flight plan remarks, so I did a little research, and now here I am. All right. Okay. So off block time. All right. Off block time. Seven twenty. Over here. Seven thirty. Twenty three thirty Zulu. Okay. And there is our flight plan. Okay. Now let's where are we at here? Oil temperature has come up. Okay, pre taxi checklist, seat belt, let's get those on. Okay, avionics going on. Unicom transponder. Okay, we 
got our transponder on. Move Charlie. Radio will test when we call. Uh, taxi light, obviously, I didn't check that at pre flight, but we don't need that currently. Uh, okay, we'll take, test our brakes on the roll as well as our attitude indicator turn coordinator. And let me go ahead and set my heading indicator to compass while I'm at it. And you know what? Bear with me just a second while I go and activate the wet compass. Parking brake is on. We are going to continue to let the prop spin. Alright, our wet compass has lit up and it has uh, indicated that we are pointing south. Jacksonville Center, November 975, Romeo Yankee. I think that may have been on Discord. What may have? I don't know, I heard a Jackson Post Center call and I'm tuned in on Unicom. I assumed it was coming through on Discord. Nope. Hmm. That's odd. Let me just confirm. Miami my Center is on, so as you guys get into. Let me just Sarasota, confirm my radio frequency. You Tampa. Tampa is covered by Miami Center. Com well, 1 so says 122.8 sure on my uh, ex pilot client. Facility. 122.8 matches up. I, 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 and I, did I hear him say a minute ago that uh, yeah. they were trying to get somebody loaded? Let me take Discord out. I can, I can guarantee I heard a Jacksonville Center call sitting here on Unicom. Unless somebody transmitted on Unicom trying to reach Jacksonville Center. That would make a lot more sense. Okay. That makes more sense. I'm going to go with that. Bring Discord audio back in. Alright, so where were we? Let me kind of regroup here. We got our avionics on. We are on Unicom currently. And heading indicator to compass. That's where we stopped at. And that looks good there. Okay. Altimeter we'll get when we grab some weather. So let's go ahead and grab some local weather. Um, looks like it is here at 119.45. Let's see if we can grab that. Tallahassee RGNL Information Hotel. 1600 Zulu weather. Wind 260 at 1 2, visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 20,000 scattered, 35,000 scattered, temperature 30, dew 0.0. Altimeter 2987. Arriving runways 27, 36, departing runways 27, 36. Advise on initial contact you have hotel. Okay, information hotel is not applicable. That identifier came up from um, um, my uh, NOAA weather plugin, so we're not gonna. That's not gonna apply here in Vatsim, and they're not gonna ask for it. I'm sure. All right, two nine eight seven. Is that altimeter? That puts us. What does that put us? Like eighty feet, sixty feet. Is that going to match our field elevation here, Tallahassee? Has anyone departed yet? 83 feet, sure does. And since I am unfamiliar with the airport, I am going to go ahead and bring my uh, airport diagram directly onto my moving map. That is going to help me out. 
And so now I know that I'm somewhere over here between Tango and Alpha 10 on the ramp. Or on a ramp. So I could just say, you know, on the ramp holding short of Tango, then he might not, he'll probably know where I'm at. So. Tallahassee Center. There's a Tallahassee approach. So we'll get a hold of that. 135.8. With information Alpha, ready to taxi via far to the south. Oh, there is a T there is an ATIS here. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. That's 119 Let's try it on COM1. Alright, negative on that ATIS. Tallahassee Arch. And I have a toggle switch linked up to enable and disable the default X Plane ATIS. Anytime I start up my uh, VATS and Pilot Client, it automatically disables default X Plane ATIS because it doesn't want to be over, it doesn't want to override, you know, the ATIS provided by VATS. Totally understandable. But I wasn't able to pull that one and I will let him know. Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1, Squawk 1511. Let me do a quick break test. Approach, good evening, Skyline 57 kilos at Millionaire for taxi, be for southbound with Alpha. Uh, 7 kilos, Italian departure, good evening, clear to request, stand by number 2. Number 6298, Papa, Taliesin departure, squawk 1554, runway 27, taxi via Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1. Sorry, was that for November 6298, Papa? Yes, that's so going to be squawk 1554, runway 27, taxi via Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1. Okay, November 16, I already pop a squawking uh, 1554. Uh, I'm uh, actually at Bravo 1 short of 27, ready to go. The uh, runway 27, line up the way. 27, line up the way. Midday, um, November 16, I already pop uh, whiskey X ray, rare services terminated, freaky change, trip by to approve, maintain via Fargadet. Uh, frequency change approved, uh, radar services. Terminated, maintain VFR, Charlie Golf, Lane, Whiskey, X-Ray. Talent Departure, Skyline, November 8033, Foxtrot. 26012, left crosswind departure approved, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Runway 27, clear for takeoff, left crosswind departure, Mooney, November 16, area, Papa. Talent Housey Approach, Skyline, November 8033, Foxtrot. Number 57, Kilo, you already copy? Alright, go ahead, 57 kilo. 57 kilo, squawk 1517, runway uh, 27, taxi via Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1. Alright, 1517, 27 via Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1, 57 kilo. Who else was calling up for a clearance? Talent Approach, Skyline, November 8033, Foxtrot. 833, Foxtrot, Italian departure, good evening. That came through very, very uh, staticky. Do you want to repeat that? Number 801 Papa, we request anything. 801 Papa, tie departure. Clear to request number two. Three, three, Foxtrot, you 
ready to copy? Three three five, sorry, ready to copy. Three three five, Scott Squawk one five seven three, runway two seven, taxi via Tango Alpha nine, Bravo Bravo one. Squawk 1573, runway 27 via Tango, Alpha 9, Bravo, Bravo 1, Skyline 33 Foxtrot. Alright, Papa, stay altitude passing. Tango, Alpha 9. Alpha 9, Papa is climbing through uh, 1100. And then. Alpha Papa, air contact. Bravo. Bravo 1. Alright. So we're going to. Take two seven, and he gave us one five seven three. Now, has departure? It's uh, Twin Comanche Charlie Golf. Golf from Mo Charlie. Charlie Golf, right. Golf from Mo Charlie. Charlie departure. Good evening. What can I do for you, Jeff? So I'm gonna go straight for uh, left. BFR departure left. to the south. We're on the uh, south ramp right. with uh, information out. Right. Correct. Golf, Golf right from Mo Charlie departure. Departure on request. Stand by number two. Eight zero one, Papa. Um, what aircraft type are you using? Equipment suffix. We are the Sirius XR one two two five. Let's grab our center line here. Tango. Six two nine eight, Papa. Our service is terminated. for you change your advisory approved. Maintain VFR. Good day. Thanks a lot for your service. Uh, Mini November 69er, Papa, thanks for coming out. Alpha 9. Thank you for flying out. Alpha 9er. Okay. Tell has the departure, Caravan 4453 Echo, north ramp, too far south, look on. Four four five three Echo, Taliasi departure, good evening. Here's a request, stand by number one. Alpha 9er down to Bravo, Bravo to Bravo 1. Tallahassee, November 77, seven, Foxtrot Alpha, holding short runway 27, ready to go. 77, seven, Foxtrot Alpha, time to departure, the wind 260 at 1-2, on course departure approved, runway 27, clear for takeoff. On course approved, clear for takeoff, runway 27, November 77, seven, Foxtrot Alpha. We got call from the you ready to copy? Ready to copy, go ahead. Charlie Golf Golf, Romeo Sierra, squawk 1524, runway... Two seven taxi via Bravo eight Bravo Bravo one runway two seven via Bravo eight Bravo Bravo one squawking one five two four for Charlie Golf Golf that Romeo way? Sierra yeah that way and there's Bravo eight zero one what are you contemplating that's great um you didn't file a flight plan so I'm having to make one for you um so I'm doing that right now but it takes a second so I'm gonna try to get some other people out before that. Alright, and bravo. There we go. And Charlie Golf Golf from Mio Sierra is there ready to taxi. Charlie Golf Golf from Mio Sierra, we're runway 27, taxi of Bravo 8, Bravo, Bravo 1. Bravo 8, Bravo, and Bravo 1. Charlie Golf Golf from Mio Sierra, thanks. Number 114, so Bravo, you ready to go? There you go, 114 Papa. 114 Papa, whiskey pop. So winds were 260. 127, 114 Papa. 260 at 12. Tallahassee departure. Baron 423 Charlie Lima is at the south ramp, ready to taxi for t uh, VFR takeoff. Hmm. This is Rubik's True Earth. Get on that side. Three zero one, Papa. I've got to my hand copy. Three zero one, Papa. Squawk one five one five. Runway two seven. Taxi to Bravo eight. Bravo Bravo one. Holy crap, this is a long runway. Squawk 1515, runway 27, Bravo 8, Bravo Bravo 1, for November 801. 
So we'll go down here all the way to the end and do a quick run up. Probably be in line. Perfect. For a minute or two. Is anyone on the voice channel? Romeo Yankee, oh, no. departure. Good evening, Squawk 1505, Romeo 27. Taxi via Alpha 11, Alpha 12, Bravo, Bravo 1. Yeah, Squawk 1505, taxi via Alpha 11, Alpha 12, Bravo, Bravo 1, November 975, Romeo Yankee. Thank you for pointing that out. Let me see if I can reduce that real quick. It's just important that the ATC volume is a bit too loud. How is that comparatively? Climbing through 800. Hopefully this guy behind me doesn't actually come up all the way behind me. And just these. Well, hopefully that sounds a little better and then it's not, you know, over-modulated or over-modulating me. Quick run up real quick. Brakes on. Trims on takeoff. Mag check, 1800. Left mag, there's my drop. Right mag, there's my drop. Prop cycle, one. Two. Three. Alright, everything's in the green. Oil temp, oil pressure, suctions, altimeter. Amp meter, got good fuel flow, manifold pressure, looks good. Lined up, ready to go, 3 3 Foxtrot. Line up and wait. Three three box trap. I am in the sky lane tonight. Um, primarily, I'm primarily I'm flying the sky lane. Uh, I do transition to the 172. You know, if I want to do some low and slow scenic stuff, or the 172 bush or some bush flying with uh, the bush uh, bush league. But today I'm in the 182. I'd say probably 80% is in this 182. Okay, strobes going on. Don't need our nav lights. Alright, squawk is good. Flaps are up. Okay, trims take off. Flap controls are good. Elevator rudder fuel responsive. Oh, fuel, nothing on the enunciator panel. Alright. We are ready to go. Clear for takeoff, left cross one departure, Skyline 33 Fox Rat. Full power. Um, yeah, I, I, I can transition essentially in a 172, 182. Uh, airspeed's alive, let's rotate. Alright. We do have positive climb rate. Climbing out at VY. Everything is in the green. We do have plenty of runway left. I am going to call it a go. 
um, you know, some, something high wing, something with steam gauges, you know, I should be able to fit that in here. Maybe even like a low wing Piper Cherokee I can fit in here. You know, some of the bigger stuff, like your, your Beechcraft bearing. A little bit too wide, I can't really fit in here. But, but a lot of the, uh, you know, all of the high wing, um, single engine, you know, two seaters. I could probably, Dave, Dave Rendon asked if I could put a, put a Bonanza in here, and I probably could, if I really tried. Um, it would take, m most, of the, most of the hard work is getting the views to line up in any aircraft. Uh, passing 1,400. Fox on course approved, climb maintained VFR. Hmm. Uh, on course approved, climb maintained VFR, this is Skyline 33 Fox Trap, thank you. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I could fit a lot of, you know, a lot of those type of aircraft in here, it just takes a lot of work to find the the view centers, um, it's one of the most difficult parts, is finding the view center of the aircraft, because each one is different. Um. Dave, I didn't run out of time to get a hold of you earlier before, uh, before the flight started this evening, but uh, I have not forgotten about you, buddy. Cruise altitude at 3,500. <laughs> All right, cruise altitude 3,500. Let's go ahead and level off here. I'm going to trim for this. Making ground speed right now about 120, doing an indicating 110, over to Utacom, Squawk VFR, thank you for your service. Good day, Skyline 33 Fox Trot. Right? Alright. Thanks, Melvin, appreciate that. Melvin says he likes the bot name. I, I couldn't figure out a, a better name for it. So I got sometimes ground is actually late for work, um, but I'm glad they made an appearance today. All right, let's a little bit of situational awareness. What do we got going on? Visually, I don't see any traffic. I do know through the ADSB that there is traffic in the area, but we do have enough separation. I really don't see any currently. Get back down a couple hundred 
concrete there. No, no. I must have a bit of a pitch up trim. I like the SR22 for, for what it is. I'm, I'm very, I don't know, old fashioned I guess when it comes to aircraft. A lot of the new glass aircraft and uh, you know, hand controls and you know, if you can fly the whole thing in one hand, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a realm of training that I just never got yet, but, but I'm, you know, for what it is. Looks pretty cool. I've never flown one. So I can see the coastline. Ground speed right now is 135. a little bit, get a little second gear going on. Fuel flow about 18 right now, about 25 uh, inches of manifold pressure. We're running right about peak. Ground speed 153, indicating 135. Get a bit of a uh, tailwind out of that 290. So, who else do we have online? Jacksonville Center? Pretty sure that's the one that I would be contacting. 132.925 if I wanted to grab a light following. One of these several Jacksonville centers. Jacksonville Center. Uh, one. Let's see, Jacksonville. Let's 
several of them on there. Jacksonville Center, Skyline, November 8033, Foxtrot. 0033, Foxtrot, Type 182, about 30 miles south of the Greenville VOR, direct to Sarasota, and looking for the VOR flight following a fable. We are currently 3,500 feet. Standing by, 33 off shot. Now he sounds awfully low. Can't really find a happy medium. Jacksonville Center, Hello, climbing, saying final 230. I need to somehow map another one. I need to somehow map another button. Jacksonville Center, good evening, United 214, descending through flight level 250. Just ATC, audio info. Jacksonville Center, good evening, United 214, descending through flight level 250. Just ATC, audio info, or ATC volume. Thanks, It'll be a job for another time. For now, we're just going to turn the engine sound down a bit. Get the engine sounds out for a little bit so I can hear when this guy calls back. Turn the cabin air on. 5040, descent out of Cuban, one arrival. Uh, Jacksonville, I believe, is landing east, Delta, which is 2989. Descent by the Cuban, one, RNAV arrival. Altimeter, 2989, United 214. Verified landing east. Landing east. United 214. 8033 Foxtrot, if you're looking for flight flying, try uh, Jacksonville Central on uh, 135.9 uh, and see if it might be better for the service. We'll go through 3 Foxtrot, thank you, good day. Uh, There's a lot of aircraft in the air, I'm sure, with the FNO going on. And so, yeah. Let's just jump back over to the Unicom land, hang out here for a little bit, and we're going to bring in some additional Unicom audio. I use what's called an X Chatter plugin when I'm flying an X plane on Unicom. Unicom land is very quiet most of the time when I'm not flying with a group. So I do bring in some, some external audio that's kind of liven it up a bit. Um, and it's, you know, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool little plugin. Um, kind of uses your location and brings in audio from liveatc.net, uh, their recordings. But the recordings are, you know, it uses your location within the simulator and it pulls, you know, recording specifically from the area so that your the recordings coming in are geographically specific to the area that you're working in. Working for you, Sound Driver, Tusky, 1 Bell, with all the standard in LS down, West Landing, 1-6 and Georgia. Mm 
I'm the traffic traveler at I fly in Silver Deer Harbor, circling 1,000 feet. So he said 135. Let's just see if he's willing to accommodate. Jacksonville Center, Skyline, November 8033, Foxtrot. Center Skyline November 8033 Foxtrot. November 8033 Foxtrot, Jacksonville. Good day, we are a Type 182, currently 3,500 feet, 35 miles south of the Greenville VOR, and we're direct to Sarasota looking for a VFR flight following if able. November 8033 Foxtrot, Jacksonville, Center, Squawk 1074. Squawk 1074, 33 Foxtrot. Maintain the VFR through the box shot. 29887 still matches up. Got good weather there. Situational awareness. Uh, right. We do have the uh, Gulf of Mexico off to our right here, and over the coast off to our left. So I had to 
I would be able to put it down somewhere, I'm sure. Okay. Um, oil temperature and oil pressure is in the green, so we're still good there. All the instruments are looking good. Okay. Except for VSI, because we're climbing. Should not be right now. Let me trim that down just a bit. caveat is people having different uh, uh, recording input levels too. He's very quiet. But that sounds like another pilot, not a controller. We're about 160 miles away from our uh, destination of Sarasota. Cruising about 3,500 feet, making a ground speed of 153, indicating 140. So we do still have some of that tailwind pushing us coming in from the uh, north there. The northwest, I guess. scenery and ortho photos done by ortho or XP. Um, at this point I can honestly say I'm disappointed in my investment with Orbix. Um, and I probably I, I I feel like I could have done, you know, relatively just the same thing by doing my own ortho photos. Um, Finding some landmark packages, um, but I run into so many errors with the OSM issues. I mean, I've run into water that should be trees and trees that should be water. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the airports don't even line up. Um, that's very disappointing. You know? but I would at least expect you know some of the X-plane global airports to at least be lined up with the uh, you know, with Orbix or Orbix to at least take care of the airports within their scenery. But it didn't seem to work like that for me. I don't know if that's Wise. We've got an aircraft behind us, 2,000 feet higher. Another aircraft in front of us is two th uh, 1,800 feet higher. And then one aircraft in front of him that's at the same altitude. So we do have plenty of VFR separation from our uh, the other aircraft in our group here. And like I, said, I don't even have visual on them. Uh, I'm sure we're pretty, pretty far enough apart there.
Still making 158, so we're, we're going to keep about 150 ground speed, and that'll keep us, you know, far enough ahead of the other aircraft, far enough behind the other aircraft. Um, so I think we got a decent pace here. I haven't seemed to be gaining or, you know, being gained upon. So yeah, I think 150 will be where our sweet spot. I'm going to have to let the autopilot take over for just a couple minutes. I'm going to go and do some wing acrobatics. Alright, so let's get our altitude set here. Altitude set. Okay. Looks like we're on a decent heading. Let's bring our heading bug around here. You know, we'll just tell the navigator to fly the current heading. And let's make sure that that grabs. Navigator has the plane. I will be back momentarily. Yes, I am under VFR flight following. However, um, I am VFR, so I don't necessarily need to uh, say be right back to the controller. Be right back.
Hopefully I didn't miss a call. I don't think I did. I didn't hear anything. Disengaged my aircraft. Okay. So we're about 132 miles away from Sarasota. Uh, and if we maintain this pace, ETA is going to be in about you know, about 50 minutes, five zero minutes. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of development on this uh, edge of Florida here. Unless it's just not showing up. See a lot of a lot of wetland.
temperatures in the green, oil pressures in the green. All of our instruments are still in the green. So everything's still looking good. Just cruising right along. Hey, there's some development, some building. Must be the town of Suwanee. Exactly what that is. Sue and E. Now, I'll tell you a little something, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, some of you may not. See how this area is yellow on my VFR map? Um, see how that area is yellow? What that is, is that is the shape essentially what it would look like at night time from above that's essentially your your city lights your your kind of your yeah you know, that's so what the city looks like at night to go to the shape um, the shape of it. it that that information even right, is even on a lot of your uh, road atlases and street maps George Lewis. That's probably the beacon I'm seeing flashing up ahead then. George Lewis Airport. Thanks Dave, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, Uh, hopefully everything goes well with your surgery. I've been praying for you. Uh, so I'm hoping, uh, hoping all that goes well. But, but yeah, any, any, you're, you're welcome anytime I'm flying, buddy. So I'd say we're a little, almost halfway to our uh, destination. June 16th is the big day. Only a couple weeks away, I think. Yeah, maybe three weeks or so. Everything will go fine. Thirteen miles out, about forty-four minutes to go. We are under VFR flight following, so um, he will tell me when to contact a different controller, as opposed to me uh, contacting for an airspace transition. Um, 
which I, I could have very well just done just as easily. But uh, you know, if if I can if I can be under ATC, I'll try to be if if they're accommodating. I just I do think that just kind of enhances the whole rat sim immersion because I'll be honest on Unicom. I would love if every pilot used the major traffic calls on Unicom. Um, that doesn't happen. I, I don't even do it a lot of times, especially in my little podunk airport. Um, you know, I, I will check it, but Unicom is awfully quiet, so I try to be under ATC when able. Like this airport off to the right here. I, mean, I guess it kind of matches up, but what I'm looking at is you know, an X plane airport, default X plane airport, and grass texture over top of the Orbix scenery, and it just it stands out like a sore thumb. Um, So yeah, that's that's one of the things I I, I guess I expected when I purchased Orpix that I would be getting, you know, you know, better airports for the area that I was purchasing. Uh, I just didn't do enough research. I basically just bought the Orpix photos. Although I do think there are some custom models for like the Disney areas and the theme parks. I think it does have that. I think that's what what this is a uh, tr true earth or fixed true earth something like that. The V V states is a good project though. Yeah. Pretty sure that's one of the vertical sims projects. Um, which is essentially ortho photos as well. Yep, just like me, Dave. I've got the Orbix True Earth for California. Is it North and South, and then Washington and Oregon and Florida? So basically, they're U.S. You know, True Earth packages I got, um, and then everywhere else I've got the uh, with the photos and. And if anybody's curious to cover the entire United States as well as the entire state of Alaska's Alaska and Hawaii and with the photos at a zoom level of sixteen. So roughly about six terabytes. Tampa. All right. We're gonna get a bit closer to the coast here. Uh, I want to take a look at this Tampa scenery package. Yeah, Hawaii is not very big at all, ortho wise.
Three three box shot. What type of autopilot am I using? What's the question? A GFC seven hundred. Now this is actually a um, an old one forty. Bendix King 140. Uh, then hard hardware-wise, the, the autopilot itself it came from Pop Wash Simulations. It's their PWS 140 mile model to kind of replicate the autopilot that this aircraft is equipped with. see some smokestacks over there, there's smokestacks here, alright, so I will, I will hand that to my bricks, I got that, at least that VFR landmark in there. The other part of my problem with the orbit scenery in it is probably my, my problem. Um, is that because you know, I run have to I run so much display, um, and my video card is it's actually an old GTX 1080 that, that's running this whole thing. So I really have to kind of reduce my. Uh, what is it, the world objects? I have to keep that about a medium. And my LOD, I kind of have to t tune down just a little bit as well to maintain a, a steady frame rate. Um, so that could be part of the problem why I don't see a lot of what I would expect to see. But one of these days, we'll upgrade. 
hard to justify right now with the cost of things. On the 4275, Tonight, Jackson, Sire, 133.32. 133.32, Delta 45. Dave, I'd like to get a 3070 Ti, and that, that's, you know, I. I've done a lot of research, and I think that's actually going to be the best bang for the buck. Um, you know, benchmark points, the 3070 Ti next to the 3080. I wouldn't disagree with you at all on that one, Dave. Yeah, 3090 T, wouldn't that be nice? to repair the float plane and break it out uh, and hit some of these uh, small floater lakes down here sometime. See if we can grab some local weather. Um, looks like we're pretty close to this station. Um, one one eight point three two five. Let's see if we can grab that. Crystal River weather. Wind 250 at 17, visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 20,000 scattered, 35,000 scattered, temperature 23, dew point minus 3. Altimeter 2993. As well as that, just to confirm, was that flight level 270 for our double one of the table? 2993. Alright. Right. So that wind's definitely changed and definitely picked up some. Okay, we have winds at 17 out of 250. So we do have a bit of a headwind. Seventy-eight miles out. Um, 
We are almost at the uh, Tampa class Bravo. I'm sure eventually we might get handed off to Miami Center. We're gonna get we're gonna get handed off to Miami, I'm sure. So let's try and stay ahead of the situation here and get Miami Center set up. Um, stand by, and looks like there is only one Miami Center online currently. One three five point one seven five. Alright, so we've got that on standby. So now, he'll probably tell me to contact Miami to approach at 135.175, and then I can just, you know, hit the activate button. Oh, oh there, he could hand me up with someone completely different. But I'm going to expect him to hand me off to Miami. site still. About to come over my left wing strut. Still in sight.
Alright, so that outer ring is 8,000 to 10,000. No, 6,000 to 10,000. Where am I at? 3,500. I'm on flight following so I really don't have to request any sort of transition. That next ring is 3,000 to 10,000, so as long as I'm on the outside of that, should be fine. Sixty-two miles out. Roughly thirty minutes to go to a wheels down, depending on how we get sequenced in. Ground speed right now, one forty-seven, indicating one fifty. I'm gonna switch the fuel tanks. Drop down a bit. Once we get closer to Tampa, don't know if we'll be able to see the skyline from here, but we'll see.
3200. You know, let's just set about 500 foot per minute descent here. Two thousand five hundred almost. And that ring, the second ring was three thousand, so it would be fine there even. Even if we crossed into that second ring. Down to 2,000 feet. Hang out here. Just due to the geographic location, I don't think we're going to be able to see the Tampa skyline from here. I downloaded the scenery pack, think it might be able to, but from the coastline, I'm not sure if we will. sandbars that we need to try and land on. I haven't gotten there yet with those uh, chat commands yet, Dave. Still pretty new to this whole Twitch thing. I want to figure that one out. There's another one, the landing rate prediction. That's the one I want to figure out how to do because I think that would be kind of fun. Uh, I've seen a couple of those predict commands come in. I just I don't know how to set it up. Um, and I, I don't stream from the same computer that I use X-Plane on, so I don't even know if that's possible. SIM Toolkit, is that a plugin for uh, stream elements or is that a plugin for like X Plane? SIM Toolkit, or is that like something standalone completely? Send to 
Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. Thanks, Dave. So thanks for pointing me out to that. Okay, great. Standalone program. So then I should be able to run that on the uh, on the other computer, and then uh, it should be able to link to X-Plane through the network somehow, I would imagine. I'll have to give it a shot. Has a lot of features. Great. I'll definitely check that out. Thank you. Send flight plans to that sim. Nice. That is one thing I miss about the old X plane pilot client is that I can file a, a, a flight plan right there in the pilot client. Um, the new one, as great as it is, um, being able to now show me traffic on four flight, and yeah, um, it also it also you also have to file your flight plan directly on the website now. Three miles to go. You know, I am going to have to look at my chat bot because my Discord link's not coming through to the hangar. Oh, huh. Go figure. There it is. And I had a bit of a delay there. How far away from the Tampa VOR? How about 9342, fly heading 110, it's going to be 26,000. It is right there. How about 9342, Tallahassee Airport is off here at 2 o'clock and about 10 miles. Well, this is St. I'm not. I'm direct, and we are about 40 miles direct to uh, Tampa, or not to Tampa, to uh, Sarasota. We were just we were just via far along the coast. Um, Although, had I flown a VOR to VOR or a filed a uh, flight plan like that, then I would, would have been able to tell you that without having to look it up. St. Petersburg. Contact, uh, 
video I see right here is the St. Petersburg VOR, unless there's another one I'm missing. Tampa VOR. Fly the airplane, Michael. Alright, 36 miles out. Uh, if we maintain this pace, I should get there in about 20 minutes or so. I would expect wheels down in about 25 minutes, depending on how we get sequenced in. Good manifold pressure is right around 23. Low temperature, low pressure is still good. Got good fuel. Suction's in the green. Cruising along, about making about 130 along the ground, indicating 130. About 2,200 feet currently. And we're just on the outside of that 3,000 uh, foot shelf. It looks like is essentially the coastline. According to the VAT scope here, I've crossed over into Miami's ARTCC.
Jacksonville Center, Skyline 33 Foxtrot. Skyline uh, 33 three Foxtrot? Yes, sir, November 8033 three Foxtrot. Did I miss a handoff from you? Yes, sir, Miami Center is 135.17. 135.17, Skyline 33 three Foxtrot. Did not miss one, never called. Never called. Miami Center Skyline, November 8033 Foxtrot, 2,000 feet. On November 8033 Foxtrot, Miami Center, where are you located? Uh, we are a Type 182, currently 2,000 feet. I'd say approximately. 30 miles, 20 miles south of the St. Petersburg VR. 008033 Foxtrot, yes, sir, I'm unable to get more at this time. Traffic uh, load, and uh, so frequency change of route. You, uh, you can, if you're going into Sarasota, you can treat that as uncontrolled. And we will treat Sarasota as uncontrolled. Over to you, um, Skyline 33 Foxtrot, thank you for your service today. So, was I correct in him saying, I'm assuming he said to treat Sarasota as uncontrolled and he couldn't handle it, which is, okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure that I heard correctly. Sarasota traffic, there yep. in 423, Lima, approximately 10 miles north, intentions of a midfield cross with a left downwind approach for runway 22, Sarasota. 22 is going to be the runway what it looks like. And let's go ahead and bring Sarasota's airport diagram over to my map here. Sarasota traffic, Sarasota 114, we've got uh, 77 Foxtrot Alpha in sight, we're going to follow them and enter pattern line. Sarasota. What is the active runway in Sarasota? Sarasota weather-wise. Winds 280 at 5, okay, no, the, the winds 230 at 8, and the 10 visibility, view clouds at 1700, view at 23, broken 11,000. Now, similar to 9 or 9 or 3, we're good there. Alright, 230 at 8, that's going to be the important part we need to know, as well as our altimeter. Okay. Our altimeter is good. Currently about 16 miles out of Sarasota. And based on our location, we are going to follow suit with everybody else across over midfield to join the left downwind for runway 22. Sarasota traffic, Sarasota 
making a ground speed 143, indicating 140. Let me go ahead and switch fuel back over to both. I'll make my first call about 10 miles out. Yonder there. Directly at our 12 o'clock. Skyline November 8033 Foxtrot is 10 miles to the north. We're going to be intending to cross over midfield to do a left down wind 422. Full stop, Sarasota. Elevation Sarasota 30 feet, so I want to make sure that I cross over midfield at about 1,000 feet. have to check that out today, thanks. Sarasota traffic, Skyline November 8033 Fox Trot, now five miles northwest of the field. You're going to be crouching over midfield at 1,000 feet to make left town wind 2-2 two -two full stop, Sarasota.
Sarasota traffic, uh, Charlie Golf call from New Sierra, turning left base, runway 92 from stop Sarasota. Fifteen hundred feet. There's other traffic. Uh, we'll probably stop on about a four and a half mile final for G2. this wide then extend my downwind a, a bit I think Sarasota traffic Scotland November 8033 Foxtrot now two miles northwest of the field gonna be crossing over midfield 1000 feet to enter the left downwind for 22 full stop Sarasota So the traffic, 3-3 three, three, Foxtrot, just crossed midfield, 1,000 feet, and to the left downwind, 2-2 two, two, Sarasota, and we do have the traffic in sight coming in on final. 3-3 three, three, Foxtrot, I just want to take a look on your uh, radar, for the So the traffic, 3-3 three, Foxtrot, three, three, turning left downwind, 2-2, two, two, and we're going to extend it to be number 3 behind Gulf Romeo Sierra. Sarasota traffic. have you in sight below my right wing and uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and slow up so you can take over. I mean, if that's you want to, I can slow down and slow. Hmm. 2-1-5-5, do have you in sight? 3-3-5-strap. Three, three, Sarasota traffic, Skyline 33 Foxtrot, turning left base 22, full stop, Sarasota. So I was making calls 10 miles out. Sarasota traffic, 3-3 three, three, Foxtrot on 3 mile final approach, 2-2, two, two, full stop, Sarasota. Alright, 
it looks like the clutch down there is about, about at the threshold. So I imagine he'll announce clear here shortly. I am on the glide slope. Let's go. Hey, uh, if you're one pop on one lap space, I'm going to do the turn final. Constitute that. That's about the end of my uh, downwind, right about there. Air speed's good. Give me a flaps 10. Alright, if you lose on both, we'll rich props in. Sarasota traffic, 33 three Foxtrot, one mile final, 2-2, two, two, we'll stop. Sarasota. Hmm. I want to try and hit that first exit. No need for me to roll this whole runway. Wait, that's two. Seventy knots. Sixty knots. And if you're one pop, but we're about a there, there, there. Alright. Flaps up. Brakes on. Oh yeah. We've definitely got this first exit. Two hundred and forty five feet per minute. Sarasota traffic, Skyline November eight zero three three box has clear runway two two, Sarasota. Alright, let's clean up here a little bit. Strobes off. Okay. Where am I at here? Um Delta two two. Sarasota traffic, 3 3 pump shot, taxiing to the ramp via Delta, Sarasota. Great landing, Dave says. Thank you. Coming from you, it means a lot. Appreciate that. Sneak in behind this aircraft right here. Okay. A little bumpy right here. Okay. Let's go over here and park. We'll shut things down. We'll say goodbye to the Virtual USA Flying Club. Brian, buddy, hello, hello. You just watched my landing on another stream, that flight sim guy. <laughs> awesome, thanks. thanks. Traffic here, Echo, turning one mile final runway two, two, okay, so I was trying to figure out how that worked. So did, was he watching me coming in? Like, was, was it a visual through his cockpit? Is that how that was working? Alright, 
let's see. Okay, let's turn our radios off. Turn the G5 off. Lights going off. Okay. Mixture lean. Mags going off. Props going off. Cabin air is going off. Parking brake on. Alright, anything else in our securing checklist here? Doesn't look like it. UAT is off. Okay. Alright, parking brake is on. Tech time. Let's grab our tech time out. Looks like 538.7. So we got 2.2 on that one. It's not a bad flight with the Virtual USA Flying Club. Brett, it's a great event. Appreciate the invite. As always, gentlemen, had a great time, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for coming yeah. out. Talk to you later. JPC, was that you that I heard? Did you come in? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not live and landed yet, but I'm here. Awesome, awesome, great, great. Sorry, I must, I must not have heard you come in earlier. Well, it's good to hear you, and uh, you have enjoyed the rest of your flight. Thanks, man. Let's get out of there. Dave, I appreciate you tagging along. Always a pleasure. Um, Brian, yes, he... Okay, great. So, yeah, he was able to... Uh, you were able to watch me land through the stream. That's really cool. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you are new here, feel free to go ahead and follow so you can catch the next one. I do appreciate you coming in. If you have, come back to see me, as always. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we've had a few, uh, a few come in today. Um, Dave's been here pretty much the duration of the flight. My buddy Caleb Westjet came in at the beginning. Uh, Melvin Leroy, always a pleasure. And uh, um, Frankie, I know I've had you on here before, um, but yeah, thanks for coming by. And who else did we have in here? No, Brian showed up there. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all. Um, I will probably be back up tomorrow with uh, the Aviate Flight Club, which is actually the first flying club. I was invited to after um, uh, getting my pilot rating on Vatstar, but they're, they are a London-based flying club, so the time frames just don't always work out. But tomorrow, I, you know, there's going to be an event that works out for me. Um, it's going to be about 7 p.m. Eastern time. going to be uh, VFR around Switzerland. Uh, so it'll be my first time flying in, the, flying in Europe, so uh, it should be interesting. And Melvin, as always, appreciate it. Um, great to have you. And I'm going to look into this uh, uh, SIM toolkit so I can get some of these other really fun um, interactive chat commands in. Um, the landing rate one, I really just want to, want to try and get that working. Um, so, yeah. So, that's it for this one. Now, the question is, who are we going to send you to? Let me take a look here. Alright. Tell you what, Slant Alpha's online. Slant Alpha Adventures, always a great time to watch. Um, looks like he's doing some ATC out of the DC Center. So let's take you on over there. So we'll head over and see a uh, slant alpha. Uh, 
Try this again. Washington Tower, wind 180 at 16, runway 19 are cleared for land traffic to southwest 737, departing priority arrival. Okay, runway 19 are cleared to land, uh, unit 314. Washington. 